Hi, I'm Ralph Serpe with the Adams County Community Foundation, and welcome to this edition of Community Media's Open House, a very special holiday version of Adams County Unwrapped. Thank you for joining us. Today, I am with Matt Crowner with the Gettysburg Green Gathering. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Ralph. It's great to be here. I'm Happy holidays. I'm sure it is. Happy holidays to, to us all. Matt, tell us about the Gettysburg Green Gathering. What is it? So the Gettysburg Green Gathering uh, started about 12, uh, 12, 13 years ago. Um, and we started out with an idea that we realized in Gettysburg, in the Gettysburg area, there was nothing going on for Earth Day. And there was a group of people who were kind of hanging out and decided we should do something about it. Um, and so at that point, uh, it happened to be a bunch of musicians and environmentally uh, conscious group of just local people. And so we tried to kind of put together a gathering on Earth Day that would be sort of like Woodstock meets uh, Sierra Club. The idea was to have like music and kind of an event. And then we would invite local um, environmental groups and businesses that practice environmental stewardship and stuff could set up their booths and kind of talk about it. We did that for a number of years. Um, and we always ran into weather issues, it seemed like, because it was in April. So we kept moving it back in, in the into May and then eventually went to June. Uh, it was starting to become quite successful. We had moved over to the Gettysburg Rec Park. Um, we had our best turnout ever and then COVID hit. So we had to adjust. And at that point in time, we sort of re-looked at what we were doing and decided to sort of retool the Green Gathering as an organization and focus more on doing actual service-oriented stuff within the community. So it started as a celebra uh, celebratory event yeah. Uh, with Earth Day, and this being Adams County, where agriculture is king, yep. um, we all take care of the land because it's, it's part of our lives and yeah. part of the economy. Yeah, and so um, we really ended up, after that, you know, as we kind of moved away from, well, we couldn't do a festival during COVID, so what we started to do was um, out kind of activities that we could get volunteers to join in on, and we struck a couple things that seemed to really work well. One was um, tree plantings. So we do memorial tree plantings and tree plantings within any kind of common space. So um, we've done them Hamilton Band Park um, and out at local schools, and we've done them at the Gettysburg Rec Park, or basically all over the county. And who plants trees? Uh, anybody who uh, wants to sponsor one, then we bring uh, high school kids, local community members, Gettysburg Garden Club, uh, people from the Rec Park, whoever wants to come and join. Um, we've had a lot of success with the schools, with the younger younger people um, tend to, to be more engaged. And then our board itself is all, the, the board itself, we're like a board, we're all volunteer, so there's no, no paid staff. And really the idea of our board is to be active and do something. So we say, you know, be part of the solution, not the pollution. That's okay. our little catchphrase. So we're, uh, so in terms, you work with young people, so we're trying to introduce young people, or the Green Gathering is attempting to introduce young people to environmental stewardship. Yeah, and they, they honestly, most of the younger generation seems probably more engaged a little bit than the, the next generation a little bit feels that way. Um, I think with climate change and things like that, the younger, the high school, junior high, high school student age group um, feels like that impacts them more directly, perhaps, or whatever. Uh, we also give out scholarships, so that helps engage them as well. So we give out scholarships to students that are either going to pursue some sort of environmental um, related secondary education, whether it's tech school or, or uh, you know, four-year four -year school or associate's degree. And in addition, we've also given scholarships to some local organizations like Strawberry Hill to help them with students that might, or with children who may need help with um, the cost of their camps and that kind of thing. So really what we're trying to do within the, the gathering now has shifted from being a gathering that's like a festival to a gathering of other organizations or people within the community that have common environmental interests. Because um, at the end of the day, our mission is like kind of to inspire and foster uh, environmental stewardship within Adams County itself through business and, and people themselves. Um, and so we've, we've, it feels really, you know, th between the Gettysburg Garden Club and um, the Land Conservancy and Strawberry Hill, there's all the, the, the Watershed Alliance, and there's tons of environmental groups within our area, all kind of working towards the same goal, but it's, it seemed to be helpful to have somebody that when there's an event coming up, we can try to bring the different organizations together. 
So I know that you, uh, you talked about tree planning and uh, that you do as an organization. What other projects have you worked on in, in the, uh, since the, the end of COVID as you've come out of your cocoon? So, uh, so we also have, um, twice a year, we bring environmental speakers to, to the county. Um, Doug Tallamy was really well attended. He's a uh, um, proponent of native plants. Um, so along those lines, we've shifted into that because there was such a good, um, we had a very good draw to that event and a lot of engagement. So we also have started planting pollinator gardens. Um, and native plant, uh, he has a thing where it's, it's basically you're doing your homegrown national park. So you, within your own yard, you can plant native plants. Very cool concept. Um, and then we've had a, we had a speaker about monarch butterflies, which, which I knew nothing about, so that was fascinating. Um, we recently had a, 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 um, um, a Thoreau living historian uh, speaker come. So we've been doing those kind of outreach. We've worked with the local, um, a number of the local parks, like I mentioned, with doing tree plantings there, with the um, Arntsville School. We did a very large planting there, which was super cool because it was all the younger elementary school kids. Sure. And it was cold and terrible weather, and they all turned out. So that was great. Um, and then once you plant the trees, you have to do the maintenance of the trees, keep up with that. Uh, and then probably the, the biggest thing we've done lately was there's a community member, um, Cynthia Salisbury, who was um, wondering why we don't recycle glass in the county. And it's, this is a great story because it really just takes one person to start affecting change. She worked with some college students and at Gettysburg College and sort of did some research about how glass recycling does or doesn't work. Um, and the more she did research, it turns out that typically if you think your glass is being recycled, it's not. And in fact, a lot of the areas, a lot of the, the waste management companies in Adams County don't even recycle glass. You just, they just throw it out. Those that do actually take it to the landfill, crush it, and use it to make roads. So it's not really turning back into glass. And uh, glass and aluminum are one of the, are the two things you can actually fully recycle and, re and reuse again. So she led the, the charge to find a um, vendor who would, who would actually really recycle the glass and then came to us to say, OK, how do we connect everybody now within the environmental kind of world since we have some you know, a, a Rolodex of people we can reach out to? Um, so at that point, we actually worked with the county commissioners. Um, and, they, and we got a grant to, to build an area to put the glass. And then the Gettysburg Green Gathering man manages the volunteers for the drop-off sites. Um, for the drop-off area and on those weekends when we're doing it. And it's taken off. It's, so we've done three of them. We're doing them the first Saturday at the um, Strabane Township Municipal Building. Mm -hmm. thing. And um, yeah, we're, the, the one we just did last week was very, very well attended. Like it's up 25% each, each time we're going. Each time you open up that yeah. voluntary glass recycling. If you're just joining us, I'm Ralph Serpy with the Adams County Community Foundation. Joining me today is Matt Crowner, who is with the Gettysburg Green Gathering. And Matt is explaining uh, the, um, uh, the rollout of voluntary glass recycling in Adams County. Uh, they received the um, uh, the county received a grant from the Adams County Fund for the Environment at the Community Foundation um, to build that drop-off center, yep. and that can only uh, build the walls of that of that big concrete bin. But it needs people in order to staff it. Right now, on the first Saturday of the month, that's from 9 to 12. Yes, first Saturday, 9 to 12. And then we're looking in April to expand it to twice a month. And you use volunteers to do that? We do. We've had a great, actually, we've um, had a, so far, the Gettysburg College students have been very helpful and engaged. Uh, we've had high school students as well that have, have come. And then just kind of random community members that want to help out, which has been, um, like, in fact, it's one of the first times it feels like we have plenty of volunteers. It's great. So, we, so there are two opportunities here for folks that are listening to us. The first is um, save your glass jars and bottles. That's what we accept, correct? Yep. And it's a judge-free zone. All right. So, so if, you have a bunch, if you have a bunch of wine bottles, we... 
Right. Well, There's and no here we are during the holidays, so uh, we anticipate the first Saturday in January will be chock full of wine, champagne, beer, and other alcoholic. Yeah, and products. we even, the last one we had um, a couple local uh, dairy farmers who've had, this I knew to me, that they've had glass that they can't reuse. And in the past, I mean, it's a, it's a significant amount, and they've just had to throw it out. And so they've been coming, and, and it's a, a chunk of glass. Yeah. So we want people to uh, uh, to save their glass jars and uh, and bottles. Yep. And uh, right now, on the first Saturday of the month, bring them down to the Straban Township Municipal Building. Yeah, you, you don't have to rinse them out if you don't want to, and you don't have to pop off the the, the ring around the the bottlenecks or whatever, you can just bring it. Any, any glass that's food-related glass. There you go. Yeah. And so that's one way to help, and we really need people to not only um, recycle their own glass, but they can be uh, sort of their block captain. Yeah, and that's, we have, that was the other, that's a great point. We had a number of people who came who were like, oh, I'm the glass person for um, you know, Springs Avenue or whatever. And so they went and picked up all their neighbor's glass and then brought it in. And we have, and, and the volunteers there, you just pull up and they unload it for you, dump it off, give you your bins back so you don't even have to get out of your car. So you can recycle your own glass, you can be a block captain for glass recycling in your Adams County neighborhood, and you can also volunteer to uh, staff the, yeah. the center. And the volunteers are all great people, so it's a, it's a nice way to meet new people too. All right. Uh, so, We'll do once a month glass recycling through April, and then it'll go likely to the first and third Saturdays of yep. the month. Yeah, if we continue on the track of the volume that we're having, that's what we, th we think we'll have to go to twice, um, twice a month, ideally, the more people we get going. Great. What else is on the docket for the Green Gathering for 2024? What are you looking forward to doing next year? So we are partnering up um, with some of the local funeral homes to offer memorial trees. Um, because uh, there, you are allowed in a public space that if, if people are cremated, you're allowed to have your ashes buried with a tree. Um, and so we have been partnering up with a number of the funeral homes to offer that to people as well. So we're taking memorial trees kind of to the next level. We've had really good success with people who have a connection to Gettysburg. Uh, for the most part, it's been people um, to date that maybe aren't residents from, of, of Adams County but they, are, um, they come to the battlefield, they're reenactors or that kind of stuff. And so when they pass away, somebody wants to, to you know, memorialize them or whatever, and they'll reach out to us, and then they're doing a little service while we plant the tree, and then the, you know, we take care of the trees at that point. Um, and part of that is we are actually trying to get our endowed fund at the Adams County Community Foundation built up so that forever we will have funds to continue to maintain the trees. To care for those trees. Because we, 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 that, that's almost a monthly, bi-monthly thing. We go out and we just make sure that, A, that they're still you know, healthy. This past uh, summer we had to water them a lot because, as everybody knows, we had a drought in the county. Um, and mulch them and edge them and fertilize them once a year to make sure that everything you know, is on track. We're, I'm lucky that on our board we have two, um, two board members who both own local businesses that do this kind of stuff and they volunteer their time to help us out. They have so, shovels. Yes, right. they have the tools and the knowledge. So I've learned a bunch from, from both of them as well. So, uh, so you talk about folks who have uh, a, a connection to this place. So, and, it, and it's not just uh, those of us that live here or work here, but it's the people who visit maybe once or every year. Um, they come here with their families and so uh, we know that we are steeped in history. We are responsible for preserving the memory of the Gettysburg Battlefield. That's a responsibility that our community takes on. And our community is responsible for feeding a big part of the world. We are one of the largest apple producers, and so the land is really important to us. And so the work of the Gettysburg Green Gathering is really important. What other organizations do you partner with, whether governments or nonprofit organizations in the we, community? Uh, at most of our events at this point, we actually typically will welcome other, the, all the, any environmental related nonprofit to come join and set up a table just to explain what, what they do. Um, so uh, really it's most of them within 
the county, and I hope I don't neglect any, but it's the, the watershed the Adams County Watershed Alliance, uh, the Land Conservancy, um, Strawberry Hill, the, like I had mentioned, the Garden Club. There's a uh, uh, Gettysburg um, Green Book Club, which is interesting, where they, they read books and discuss them. I think that came out through COVID, kind of. Uh, so a number of our board members participate in that. Um, who else am I forgetting? There's, there's many that I'm forgetting, I'm sure. Well, and you've been, uh, your events are held at, during the farmer's market. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We partnered with the farmer's market. I forgot about that one. So we're really looking forward to this upcoming year. Last year, for the first time, we did a, uh, we, we joined with the farmer's market to put on an event called the homesteading event, um, which was about stuff that people can do at, at their house, whether that's stewardship and environmentally related. And very, it was pretty well attended and successful, but we want to take that to the whole next level. We had, um, there's a, a group, another group we work with out of Frederick that's the uh, electric car group, okay. kind of informal, but they bring like really nice, it's not the normal cars that you see all over. They bring all sorts of different stuff, different cars that I'd never seen, motorcycles and everything that are all electric vehicles. And we, we had them, I think in like at our 2016 or 17 event before electric cars were really a thing and it was probably the highlight of that particular festival because nobody had seen, you know, they look like uh, the DeLoreans with the doors sure. that open, all, all sorts of crazy stuff. So we'll have them back again and we're looking that this year we're going to have, it's going to be more specific workshops. So teaching people how to can maybe or uh, composting and, uh, you know, actual things like that that people can schedule a time and come and see. This past year was more where people had their booths and you, they would present their, you know, you'd go talk to them. But we're Do looking you, to make it more workshop oriented. Does the Green Gathering have any connection to any of the environmental groups at um, middle schools or high schools in the county? We do. Um, primarily right now we've been working with the Gettysburg schools and the uh, Big Leville school districts. Um, but that's not to say that we won't work with the other ones. That's just kind of where we've ended up as in terms of, I think probably where most of our tree planting has happened, that's typically how we get them. Oh, we also do, I totally forget, we also do a garbage pickup along Tawny Town Road from where Tommy's is located in Gettysburg out to um, Blacksmith Shop. You know, one of the interesting things that uh, uh, Matt Crowner has done, other than serve on the board of the Adams County Community Foundation, and for that we thank you, um, also served as the chair of the Adams County Community Foundation Scholarship Committee. And an interesting thing has happened over the last few years in that the number of uh, students who apply for scholarships at the Community Foundation are uh, both uh, tracking toward technical scholarships, technical education, but also in environmental education and environmental engineering. And we've had a number of our top um, uh, Adams County scholars focused on environmental engineering and the study of uh, environment as it relates to agriculture and um, one, one, of our, one of our favorite scholarships that I, I can think of over the last like 10 years that we've given out was a student who um, was the he's the first person from his family who's going to secondary education um, he's was raised on a farm he was going into a two-year tech school and then he switched when we followed up with him to get a four-year degree and um, it's agricultural related, so he can come back to the community, which is something that we all, you know, if we can figure that out, that would take us all a long way. Instead of people, you know, uh, getting trained and educated and leaving the county, he's getting education and learning and coming back to his family farm to help take it to the next level and stay within the community, which if, for, from our point of view, if we can give scholarships that, that can affect that kind of outcome, that's, that's the best case scenario for back. all of us. You know? Well, um, I love learning about the Gettysburg Green Gathering. We all like uh, participating in both the events that you do and understanding um, uh, the role of the Green Gathering in Adams County. How can people help the organization, either with their time or with their dollars? The, uh, time is probably the best, but dollars help as well, as everybody knows. Um, if you visit gettysburggreengathering.com, we have information there about how you can make a donation. You can also make a donation to the Adams County Community Foundation for our endowed fund. That would be immensely appreciated so that we can keep uh, doing what we're doing when we're not here. Um, and 
Then, uh, in addition, on our website, we keep a list of acti upcoming activities and things with little sign-up sheets just to give us a head count to know who all is coming. Um, and last but not least, you can always send an email to info at gettysburggreengathering.com. And uh, we'd love to have volunteers both for uh, tree plantings, trash pickup, and especially the glass recycling. We can always use help. And if you can't volunteer, you can also make sure you come and drop your glass off. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Thank Thanks you so much out. for joining appreciate us. It. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this edition of uh, Community Media Open House, Adams County Unwrought, to our holiday edition. To find out more about the Gettysburg Green Gathering and uh, environmental um, uh, programs around the county, please visit the GettysburgGreenGathering.com website. Once again, I'm Ralph Serpy with Matt Crowner. Um, thank you for joining us.